Hi guys, it's Friday night, I'm slightly less than sober, and this is Lifeless Planet. Let's go! Now, last time, um, Alita was her name, and she died by turning into a tree. So explain that one to me. But that caused all of the uh, emerald fire, this green moss, it caused all of it to grow back in like five minutes. Which is kind of ridiculous, and I'm not sure how turning into a tree helps with that at all. But if that's how it works. And presumably this will generate oxygen, which will mean we can uh, finally get out of our spacesuit in order to die alone on a planet far from Earth. Which, I don't know, but I don't know about you, but that sounds like fun to me. Uh, okay, we clearly need to climb rocks. I am at least 10% certain that that is what needs to happen. It sure looks like it, like they're going in that direction. Yeah, yeah it is. So yeah, I'm actually uh, recording this on the same day as the previous episode. And the reason I'm not recording it right after is because I had class then. But I don't now, because it is uh, 11, actually. A little bit late. I generally don't stay up too terribly late. Get most of my work done at night, uh, I guess kind of evidently, since I'm doing it now. I mean, you'll see it later, I suppose, but you know what I'm talking about. Whoa, that's a satellite dish on top of just the stone pillar, I guess? That's cool. <clears throat> that is actually really cool. That's super intimidating. And board it up. So the other portal does lead back to Earth, but hundreds of years in the future. What? Portal time. The portal to this planet was a one-way transport mechanism, as we discovered following our initial arrival. We originally assumed that it would work like any doorway, that we could return through the same portal device at our convenience, but this was not the case. Thankfully, we eventually discovered the second portal, the departure portal, leading back home. This two-portal system was actually very efficient for transport purposes, and we developed our settlements appropriately to regulate travel back and forth as necessary. But what we didn't comprehend at first was the lost time encountered through the portals. While transport happens quickly, time on Earth and this planet are not in sync. We soon realized a week on this world was a month back on Earth. When the portals failed, this time disparity became great. When the arrival portal malfunctioned and killed so many people, we became afraid to use the departure portal to return to Earth. Over time, we started to see images we did not recognize on the other side. There were strange, towering structures, much more advanced than anything we'd ever seen before. Some believed the portal had recalibrated to the home world of the portal creators, but I knew the truth. The images in the portal were of, a, of Earth, but centuries in the future. Unfortunately, we never tested our hypotheses given the completely unstable power reactions from the portal. It was far more likely we would suffer a tragic transportation accident like our comrades from home attempting to reach us. There were no volunteers, and eventually no further opportunities before the portal went dark and cold. In retrospect, I wish we'd taken our chances. Well, that's a little bit dark. Um, kind of crazy though, and I guess it explains how Alita is still alive because... She was born in, like, the 70s, I think it was. Hmm, taking a drink of water. And now she's dead. So, no idea what year it is, but, uh, R.I.P. in peace. I'm liking this music. Very synthy. That? That is a portal. Oh, you know what? The green fire 
killed everything and made it unstable. Or emerald fire. Kill, uh, dying off. Killed everything and made the portals unstable. So now that it's back, we get portals again. And there is presumably, um, well, quite possibly Alita, actually. But maybe one of the portal creators. I don't think I came from there, so, uh... There's another one. There's another one. This is definitely them. I think she brought them back to life. That is kick-ass. They look scary as fuck, but also really cool. Kind of wriggly. It reminds me of, uh... Actually, in an anime I watched... Uh, what is it? Gargantua on the Verdant Planet? Something like that. There was some monster that was sort of squid-like, and it looked a lot like these guys. And I'm just kind of thinking of that as I look at them. Because they were actually humans that had been genetically modified or whatever, and so... Parallels. Storytelling. No, but wow. Okay, if this is the end of the fucking series, that would be kind of funny. But that is... that's... Definitely buildings. Even vaguely modern buildings, actually. Perhaps future buildings. Ugh, oh, it's trying to grab the camera from me and I'm trying to look in there. Alright, let's see. Can I do anything with this? The ground is... doing things. I think this might be the end. Those definitely look really modern, though. Well, well, not sure what's up there with the uh, lines. That's slightly strange. This is it. Wish me luck. As I understand, you've kept your wife on life support. It sounds like you haven't been able to let her go. Actually, I did it for her. I want to give her every chance to live again. Even if I'm not here. Well, that's nice. But technically, due to time dilation, uh, due to uh, traveling at twice the speed of light, you got here, or there, you may be back at Earth. You got to the planet uh, before you left Earth. No, this is, this is after you left. Never mind. I was gonna say, maybe there's a chance that since you got there before you left, now the future of when you got there is when you left and it all lines up, but no credits. Wow. So, we may have slightly contributed to saving a dead planet and also went home, but to the future, so it's not really home. Well, this was a pretty solid game. I definitely enjoyed it. Um, yeah, I didn't really have any problems with it. it uh, the controls could be a little bit jerky sometimes. But, I mean, that's not terrible. Especially the pushing things, actually. The pushing things was bad. That was just hard to do. This looks like it's flickering to me. That's kind of weird. Wow, that's kind of off-putting, actually. Not sure why... Hey, look, Yogurt is a Kickstarter supporter. Good job, Yogurt. Uh, good for you. And also base. I guess. Sure. I mean, why not? But yeah, um... I don't know how I'd rate it, like, out of 10-wise, but... It's worth picking up if you like puzzle games, except I've just shown you how to solve all the puzzles. So, maybe not so much. 
An interesting story, definitely. And I like the uh, most about Earth. Russianness. Well, my wife, first of all, and then Earth itself. All of it. She saw the beauty of this planet long before I did. And now you're back to witness it. You truly yourself. Love of course. And if you lose someone you love, even 20 light years probably isn't enough distance to make you stop missing them. Oh, ho, 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 ho. Um. Wait. Wait, is that suggesting Alita was in love with us? I'm not sure. It's a slightly open ended um, ending. <laughs> open ended ending. Anyway, uh, like I was saying, yeah, it, um. No, I forgot what I was saying. The Russianness. The Russianness is cool, just kind of because I know some Russian, and I was like, hey, I can relate to things and kind of half understand things, and that was neat. I thought, honestly, that was just really fucking lucky. I, I mean, I kind of got it from this, but it, it was a comfortable level, I think. It works well for someone who doesn't know any Russian, and as someone who does know Russian, I had a little bit more fun with it. So... That is the end, I guess. I'm surprised I'm wrapping up this early. Didn't expect to run into the end yet. So I have to figure out what I'm gonna be doing for next uh, series. But whatever it is, I hope you've enjoyed Lifeless Planet and I hope you enjoy what's to come. So as ever, I will see you guys next time. But not on the Lifeless Planet. <laughs>